thanks for picking up the car. Thanks for thanks for passing this over. Yeah. Nice. Keys here. He's got the BMW iX. So how long have you when did you get the car? When you, yesterday. Yesterday. How do you like the car? Uh interesting. Interesting, <laughs> huh? Would you trade one of your cars for this? For this? Uh, no. No. For okay. the size, because it's the size. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a smaller one, lah. Yeah, I like, I like smaller cars. So this this size okay. is not, not the car. The size of like. All right. Thank you, Thomas. So now I'm gonna bring this back and uh, see what's this car like. When I switched to Pro Mileage, in my case, I got 46-47% of savings oh, for that car. Yeah. Pro Mileage was the only one that gave me 5,000 extra value to cover, yet still cheaper, a lot less. A lot Turn up! Okay, so I have just taken possession of the BMW iX from Thomas. Uh, I'm going to be heading back to PJ. It's 6.30 p.m. The most jammed time, most congested time of the road. Okay, so looking at this terrible jam, I have decided to try out the adaptive cruise control since well cars are not moving okay i hope i hope these guys next to me uh they are aware that i'm trying out the adaptive cruise control um you know because you know malaysians have this habit where where they see a, a gap you know they try to squeeze in and or they will try to be super aggressive in case you termakan their jalan right but what a lot of people don't realize is that when you have a bottleneck traffic like this, the best way to go about it is to alternate. All right, let the, let all, let one car in, then you go. One car in, go. One car in, go. Okay. So the car moves itself. So after I think after the car in front gives like moves, like you know one car length ahead, the car will decide. Okay, now it's time for me to to move. So you don't have to step on the accelerator to tell the car to to move. The car will move itself. So the car actively monitors the, the traffic conditions ahead. All right. And uh, let's, this will be a good test to see how, how well equipped it is to deal with Malaysian traffic. You see, because right now I'm in the middle of a bottleneck. Two sides, cars are coming here. This is, I'm like, you know, Sanko in the middle, you know. So I am really leaving it to the car to decide whether I get to Jalan or not, right? Wow. Wow, this thing quite aggressive. Eh? <laughs> Usually I'd be damn angry, but well... <laughs> not bad. BMW really calibrated this thing well. So, you see, there's a preway here that is not letting me through. So the car decides, okay. I'm not making a move, but now the Preve has moved on and I'm true. And the best part is the car got me in on the correct lane. Zero inputs from me, guys. Zero inputs from me. Not bad. Not bad. This, that was a very, very good uh, test. All right, of these of the uh, the, the adaptive cruise control system, it was able to, I would say, I would consider very competently negotiate its way through a bottleneck queue. Brilliant. Okay, so there's a slight curve on the road, of the road, right? See the steering is already is turning to follow the curve of the road. 
that is going to be the big test of the system. So you can see in front, I'm not sure if the camera captures it well, but if you see in front, there are cars. The cars are coming up from, from here, signaling right, trying to come in. Cars from this lane, signaling left, try to go up. And a lot of time, my few times trying to exit from here, sometimes drivers can damn chibai one. They die, die, don't want to let you through also can, right? And the best, and there are also those that you signal left ready, they actually want to come into this lane, but they mati mati want to from behind, want to zap, go in front and cut in front of you. For what? Right? Isn't your objective wanting to get to the next lane as fast as possible? Ah? Right? If let's say the car is in front of you, you let him through in front of you, lor, right? Then you sell it behind ma. Okay, so now I'm going to go left all right okay this one i think i'll have to manually take uh, i think no choice well, just now the car didn't seem to recognize that that it was okay but now i, I re-engage the the adaptive cruise control ah there i see this ding dong here it's coming from my back he mati mati want to sell it in front all right so it's okay, no problem. I made my lane change. Okay, there's a Yaris trying to come in. Let's see whether the car detects it or not. All right, car detects pass. Not bad. Overall, not bad. I had to intervene a bit, but uh, I would say the system, you know, could perform in a in a, in a general sense quite admirably. So now it's maintaining a respectable distance with the Yaris in front. All right, Santa Fe is coming into my lane. Car recognizes it. Not bad lah. Overall, this this system is quite, and and the I can see from my display, the car is actively perceiving its surroundings. I am seeing all the, you know, surrounding cars recognized here in this graphic. So it's it's good. You see all the relative positions of the various cars around me are appropriately appropriately represented uh in in this graphic here so the thing is that right with this the adaptive cruise control system here it really takes away a lot of stress out of your driving and one more you see because the thing is that the electric motor drive system so quiet so free of vibrations the the the, the overall journey now becomes a lot less stressful because you see in your regular combustion engine cars there's always the that vibration that comes from the engine into the cabin however well insulated it is right it still minutely shakes your body that little bit here in the ix with its electric powertrain no such thing complete blissful serenity you know not even like the those sounds oh that's Iwan Kong in his M3 basically it's one of the the least stressful you know traffic jam situ stop go traffic that uh, situations that I've been in except for the fact that I'm trying to get home as quickly as possible to have dinner with my kids and wife okay guys so behind me here this is the BMW iX from the outside specifically this is the X-Drive 40 Sport. So it is the more expensive of two variants of the iX available in Malaysia. And the 40 number on the badge, all right, denotes its, uh, its outputs. So if you are, you know, even if you didn't start, go uh, read up on the car, when you look at the number 40 here, you would guess that this is around the 300 horsepower performance range and the exact number is 326 horsepower 630 newton meters of torque this is the sport variant so it's the more expensive of two variants priced at 407,000 ringgit uh, you have to top up a bit more to get the five-year warranty and service plan which I highly recommend if you're on a lower budget there is the base X Drive 40 that goes for about 300 and 67,000 ringgit same performance 
uh, slightly different appearance, a bit lower spec, but uh, overall looks the same, okay? So, bring you, well, on a closer look of the iX. Now, firstly, I have to admit, uh, when I first saw the iX, especially in pictures, uh, it is one of the most challenging looking BMWs. In fact, when I look at this car, right, I think what BMW was trying to achieve with this car was that they are they are trying to do what the Bengal eras Bengal era cars did for BMW at that time. Remember the E65, the E60. Those cars until today, their designs continue to polarize opinion. But you know, if we, when you look at modern day an E60 right now, right, even though it's nearing two decades of age, it still looks like you know a proper modern car. All right, so the, those, that was the era that BMW propelled itself to overtake Mercedes-Benz as the number one premium car maker in the world for a good number of years. So I think BMW remembers that era very freshly in their minds. So this time around, having recently uh, seen Mercedes surpass them, all right, they have decided to go on a design direction that once again challenges opinion, challenges convention. The iX here, honestly, in person, it does not look as offensive as it does in pictures, although this is still, uh, it still continues to polarize, lah, uh, no two ways about it. To start with, let's look at the, the details. Lah. This is, well, there's, there's no combustion engine here, okay? So the, what BMW previously needed as a grill, well, they no longer need the grill anymore. So this has now become somewhat of an ornamental piece, okay? Uh, it's laminated. There's a camera integrated here. So this does not actually function as a grill because there's no motor inside there. But curiously enough, this bonnet cannot be opened, okay? You cannot open this bonnet as an end user. You can own only an authorized BMW service center uh, has the means to open this bonnet. So under this bonnet are probably some other maintenance items. Okay, so there's no cargo carrying capability inside this uh, un in, inside this front space here. Uh, but there was, of, there you will still of course have your steering gear here. You also have your um, your brake braking system all inside here as well. But yeah, so there's no car, there's no extra cargo space right there. Okay, uh, here you have BMW laser lights. Okay, a, a, a radically new interpretation of the traditional BMW lighting signature. But you still have that, you know, the quad, the you know the, the the lighting still comes in pair. So you have this once one LED element here, one LED element here, one beam element here, one beam element here. And you have the blue highlight here to, to underline the fact that this is a laser light, okay? Uh, not sure if BMW is continuing with this Beaver grill design moving forward because as we, as we have heard, the, the 4 Series facelift have, has already ditched this Beaver grill design. So they're go, going back to a more conventional shape. So it remains to be seen when BMW facelifts this, will they keep this design feature here as well okay uh so here you can see this this gloss black trim here uh you know in conventional the older older school cars where you still your oh, conventional combustion engine cars we are used to having these large cooling ducts here at the side of the bumpers for you know to denote sportiness you know for additional cooling but here Right in the iX here, you can see right the the black elements are still there, but it's all covered up. It's all covered up. So in a way, they they put the black elements there to give the design that sense of familiarity. But, uh, well, as a, but most of the time it's all closed up. Okay, for better aerodynamics. Here you can see these are, um, are movable flaps. Okay, so if let's say like you need a bit of air to go in and cool. Presumably the battery, well, it can open up. All right, so you come to the side. Now this is of the SUV profile, and uh, the underside all is blacked out. Okay, uh, the wheels 22 inch in size, and the the what you call it interestingly enough, this center 
center bore here is rather small. Okay, so the wheels here, 22 inch in size, rather intricate design and uh, quite a small center bore. All right, uh, and it's and it, it's its smallness is further you know exaggerated by the fact that these are 22 inch wheels. So it that this 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 the, the BMW logo there it looks extra small compared to most other uh, other BMW models. Uh, now we come to the side mirror. So this is well not from a, a conventional BMW parts bin. This is not shared with say a G30 or a G20. Okay, uh, a, a slightly more edgy looking design here. Okay, slightly more edgy looking design. Uh, you've got a side camera here. The door handles. So, uh, keyless entry on both sides, but surprisingly not on the, on the, on the rear door. But for Kayla, honestly, that's fine. Uh, the door handle is recessed and opens electrically. Okay. So, you have frameless doors as well. Just to show you guys frameless doors, which I'll bring you guys uh, on a closer look later on. The rear doors, okay, now check this out guys, the rear doors opens. So the door shut line goes all the way down here and ends abruptly here. This is a, a, a classic SUV design uh, practice. Why? Because let's say like when you, when you drive off an SUV off-road, if you splash mud at the side here, so when you open the door, okay, you can enter and exit the you can enter the car without accidentally, you know, bringing the dirt inside. All right. Wow, this is a very large charging port, AC DC. So uh, this 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 charger this uh this charging port positioning works good for me. It works better for me than in the PHEVs. Why? Because this allows me the this allows the the cable to reach the charging port uh, while I reverse park. So this is this is something that works for me. And you open this, right? You can have AC and DC charging as well. Okay, so we come to the back. The tail lights, very narrow, very slim design. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you have this blacked out because these are all, it's all cosmetic, like blacked out at the, at the lower lower side. You even got a diffuser treatment here at the bottom. Check this out, guys. You got a diffuser treatment here at the bottom. And here at the back, the reverse camera is integrated into the BMW roundel. Very, very neatly done. Okay, and as you open up, okay, this is the boot. So here you can see there are auxiliary tail lights here. This is in accordance with European regulations whereby for hatchbacks for SUVs, when you open the tailgate, uh, the, the, there must still be lighting elements that are visible to the back in case, you know, let's say when you're parked at night, you can still flash your hazard lights. Okay, this is why cars like the Audi Q5, for example, has two clusters of lights because when the tailgate opens, okay, there's still the, the lower light at the bottom of the bumper. But this one, uh, BMW chose not to put at the bumper, so they have to put in an additional lighting panel here inside. And here you can see the carbon fiber chassis, you know, uh, exposed. BMW chose not to paint it, and I think that's great, all right? It, it exposes a rather unique element of this car. So, of course, the finishing of the boot is uh is familiar bmw stuff you open this there's a large uh under tray here and in there as well for you to to store away extra items all right and the seats okay can be dropped at the touch of a button so uh not a perfectly flat floor not a perfectly flat floor but you have a seamless connection here okay so it allows you to load uh, heavy uh, large items without them rocking about so let me just bring this up okay and and just to show you guys also there's an additional release button here down all right now just turn off the radio
Okay, so this is the door card, a very simple, and I like the color scheme, a simple two-tone door card, all right? And what we have here. So, the door, the door opening, okay? There's this button to open the doors. There's this button here to open the door. But, in case the electric release fail, there is a ma hidden manual uh, manual release here, okay, to open it up. So you've got Harman Kardon audio system here. There's this nice ambient lighting at the door frame. Over here, two USB-C ports. Now, I can't figure out what this is for, to be honest. This is probably a slot for you to hang, uh, for you to mount a, 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 an accessory monitor or something like that. Okay, uh, so see the seat backs feature fixed headrest design. All right, the rear, the rear seats also, these two are fixed headrests. This is adjustable. And you have this armrest here with a pop open cup holder, which for some reason, it's not popping up. All right, so never mind that. And uh, you've got two, the isofix mounts here with this hinged covers, very neat. And you can see the seat pattern here. Uh, he has, has this uh, pattern stitching here. Okay, so the, there's a lot of uh, polygons in the, the, the design team here has a lot of polygons inside. So you can see here at the, at the seat pattern here at the door card where this line, it goes all the way straight down here that needs least segregates the black color zone and the maroon color zone and it goes flows very, very nicely in here. Okay, uh, up here, very spectacular uh, panoramic tinted roof. All right, which you can, okay, you press this button here to adjust how much light comes in and out of the cabin. All right, and uh, just space, I'm 170 centimeters tall, seated here at the back, a fist of headroom, good lean angle, and fantastic thigh support good leg room as well the seat backs are quite thin now okay so that uh, that allowed that frees up even more available room now there's also the rear zone climate control there's no missing buttons here all right uh fan speed so it's rear quad zone climate control you notice that there's a lot of so you notice that there's a lot of uh, a lot of floor space here underneath all right compared to traditional BMWs where you know you have to accommodate a, a prop shaft there's no center tunnel here everything here it's all flat okay I'm just going to show you the front section of the cabin this is something of course very unfamiliar uh, if you've come from a BMW I think this is one of the most radical redesign of a BMW cabin in ages ages okay uh, there's the angular steering wheel for one and and this is a surprise because door mounted seat adjustment is a traditional mercedes styling cue so bmw put that it's crystal colored this one is the seat memory adjustment all right and uh power windows light switches down there and the overall right you can see that there's a, a very minimalized design there's very very little in the way of buttons okay so but here the center console here so this is unique to the sport model where this wood open pore wood finish trim and um yeah so it's one large surface and yes people will be complaining that hey you know it's there are no buttons to feel to touch and feel but all these labels here okay are embossed so you can actually there is you can actually feel like, let's say right now i'm touching already like i can feel the nav uh, you know, there's the tactile feel over it, so I can feel it over there. Okay, that let's say for example, when this is this of course that you need a bit of familiarity. So let's say like when you're driving, you don't want to look away, so you feel for this, the knob, and then you feel that okay, roughly in the two o'clock direction, there's this okay, that's the home button. You press it, and the eye drive here goes to home. Okay, uh, this crystal gear selector, well the op. It, it, it looks 
new and what, but the operating principle is very familiar if you have if you have if you have driven BMWs of the last ten years anyway. It's the same design. This slot here is 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 a is a place for you to put your mobile phones, and it's clever. I've always been waiting for a car maker to come up with a design like this. So you see, this they it has these two two notches here. So you can pop your phone here. You can see down there the two USB-C ports, right? So your cable, your charging cable goes straight down, charge the phone. Okay, this is very, very clever. And this surface is rubberized. So as you drive, your phone, you don't have to worry about your phone sliding around. Or the other alternative is there's also a wireless charging tray here as well uh, to for you to put your phone to enable wireless charging. Just that uh, yesterday when I was driving, I took a hard corner, the phone flew off. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the center console box here. Okay, quite deep. Okay, and there's also a little tray here as well. So, yeah, overall, very, very new and unfamiliar design. But uh, it's it's a bit, I would say, yes, there you will get the, the, the common comments of from the older enthusiasts that you know they are moving away from the traditional bmw design but hey look you know the only constant in life is change and uh let's just say that bmw can't go on producing interiors that look like a, a, a an evolution of the e39 or e60 forever they have to change they have to innovate they have to re, re reinvent their own wheel every once in a while and they did that here okay so this is a hexagonal view which will take a bit of getting used to lah. all right but let's let's come let's go to, to the front to get a better look all right okay so start button so you can see here there's a continuous floor here all right let's say like for ladies or whatever you can put your bags here uh even even for me for example uh, i can this is a good space for me to put my working bag all right as uh, as you as you drive so a convent here so all the climate control is moved to the screen so very little in the way of buttons okay there's a button here to open the glove box and this whole screen here this is curved and it's it's you see it's a it's a thin design with, with with some supporting struts here at the side looks properly modern and now this is the uh, this is the 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 new generation instrument cluster let me just adjust it in an angle so you can see the heads up display as well and i like how okay the Okay, so right now, what I've set here is, I've set this to display the surrounding radar. Okay, that is to display the compass. You can swap between these two. So, in a way, what they have done is that, right, the, the instrument cluster and the HUD, the displays here, they can complement each other. And, and that's great. Okay, so here, the, the, this is the power reserve meter. This is the, uh, this is the, speedometer and you can see it reads only until 220 kilometers per hour and this actually brings me back to um the, the controversy that that we what that we had with when volvo introduced a 180 kilometer speed cut for their cars because if you look at it right uh i'm digressing a bit but volvo uh because they have already made a decision to go full ev within the foreseeable future when you go full ev uh, you're not going to hit speeds of 250, 300 kilometers per hour. So 180 kilometers per hour is actually a sensible speed, you know, to, to limit your electric cars when you put that into context. Okay, so this is the new generation iDrive design. Uh, looks nice, actually. Okay, the, the graphics are crisp and, and the response is, you, so you still have the touchscreen function here. So we go to driver settings, okay, and here you can adjust. Uh, now, this is one important thing that you guys must know. Huh? So you can adjust the energy recovery setting. Uh, you can choose adaptive, high, moderate, and low. Now, uh, those of you who are new to EVs, if you choose 
any of these above settings, right? When let's say when you're driving normally and you suddenly release the accelerator pedal, you may be taken aback by the uh, by the abrupt sucking out of the car's momentum. Why? Because the energy recuperation is is trying to re regain back all the kinetic energy and store them back as electric power. So if you want the, the more traditional feeling whereby when you release the accelerator pedal, the car free wheels, you will need to set this to low. But do this, you will need to more rajin to charge the car more often because, because what it means is that there will be more of the, the, the car's battery being used up okay, and not recuperated. And there's another thing. Now, just now I was trying to find how to open the bonnet, right? So, as they say, RTFM, read the manual. So, I go and search bonnet. And this is where I learned that the bonnet can only be opened by a service center. You cannot simply open the bonnet yourself, okay? The BMW does not allow you to open the bonnet of the iX yourself, okay? So, this is something new that I learned. Okay, I have to admit, when I first saw the pictures of this car, I really was not a big fan of what BMW has done with the iX and I, I, I still honestly can't envision myself being in a position where I look at this and I think, hmm, this is a car that I'd like to buy. But disregard the form factor, I will have to say that where driving is concerned, I find this old, the overall experience to be rather appealing. Because firstly, um, I can the, the BMW has done a fantastic job in the overall calibration of the way this car responds and reacts. All right, uh, as I as demonstrated earlier in the video, the 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 adaptive cruise control is superbly calibrated for Malaysian traffic. Barely needed any intervention on my part. I'm not saying that you know you should drive this off, drive this with hands off the wheel and, and take your eyes off the road, but let's just say that if in a traffic jam situation you really can delegate this the driving duties to the car, alright, you sit back, relax and just watch. Uh, but on times when you do the driving yourself, you would find that the, this is no different to drive than that of an X5. It's just that one, when you step on it, there's no sound, okay? Uh, the accelerator pedal is calibrated in a way that, that you know, that its response still feels intuitive, okay? The, it has just enough resistance back to tell you that okay you step on this some more you're going to unleash a bomb so you know um overall i drive the, the whole time i drive this car around in you know in, in city stop go traffic hardly feel you know the any and it, it, it feels very easy very intuitive to drive and when i need to unleash more performance, just step on it a bit harder and it goes. It just goes. So, um, well, I've driven this car for, I've collected this car from Thomas last night, driven it now. Uh, I still have got about 60% of battery left. Uh, you know, later need to send this car back to Cyberjaya, right, to BMW Malaysia headquarters. So, uh, in terms of usable range, this is actually fantastic because what this means is that, right, let's say for my kind of traveling patterns, I can conceivably use this car for two days before needing to recharge, all right? So you, you don't have to, it, although it's advised to, you, pro, you probably want to charge it every night to ensure that the next morning you leave the house with a full range on your battery, but you can get away with charging it once every two days, okay? Um, but here's the thing guys, I mean when you look at it right, when you embrace uh, electric mobility, electric powertrain, alright, and you stay in a house whereby you install the charging facilities in your house, uh, you actually save yourself that bit more time because 
now you don't now you don't have to drive to a petrol station to refill to refill your car because every day you are ref, re, refueling your car already all right so in that sense yeah if you are if you are staying in a landed house you can install a charging bay in your home you actually save time of course, I, I, I don't have the means to, I, I don't have the enough data to tell you how much it increases your electric, electricity com consumption. But hey, you look at RON97 prices now, how much more expensive can your electricity be, right? So, so I would say that, you know, uh, having had this car for two days and a night, uh, I find that it's, this is not only a pleasant car to drive, all right, but I can conceivably uh, envision myself use, using this as a daily driver even though the design does not entirely appeal to me but the driving experience is not bad and yeah so I may not quite fancy you know buying a BMW iX anywhere anytime in the foreseeable future but if this is a preview alright if, if this is an indication of what BMW is achieving with their electric power train then I, I can conceivably see myself in an electric powered BMW with a design that better uh, suits my taste in the not too distant future okay guys so if you're a football fan just like I am you have a chance to win yourself an all expenses paid trip to watch an English Premier League game live in the UK with every purchase of Castro Magnetec and Castro Lubricants, you also get an additional 25 ringgit credited into your Touch and Go e wallet. So uh, pick up your bottle of Castro Edge or Castro Magnetec today and stand a chance to win an experience of a lifetime watching an English Premier League game live in the UK.